Number 88. Liquid N2O3 is dark blue at low temperatures, but the color fades and becomes greenish at high temperatures as the compound decomposes to NO and NO2. At 25 degrees Celsius, a value of Kp equals 1.91 has been established for this decomposition. If 0.236 moles of N2O3 are placed in a 1.52 liter vessel at 25 degrees Celsius, calculate the equilibrium partial pressures of N2O3 gas, NO2 gas, and NO gas. So the first thing is that they're giving us a Kp value right there. They're giving us information on N2 and O2. So we first have to have a balanced equation. Now, there's a conflicting idea here. You guys might have caught it, that they're asking us for the pressures of N2O3 gas, NO2 gas, and NO gas. However, in the beginning of the problem, they said that N2O3 was a liquid. So first off, it's, it's basically stating that N2O3 is going to decompose, right? So when N2O3 decomposes to NO and NO2, we have to write that down. So we know that the general formula is that N2O3, N2O3 will come to equilibrium because they gave us a Kp value uh, with NO and O2. Now here's the conflicting idea, guys. They said that it was going to be a gas here, but then at the beginning they said it was a liquid. This changes the game because if it's a gas we will be able to use this for the Kp, but if it's a liquid, we can't use this for the Kp, giving us a, a completely different number. Which one are we going to pick? Well, it turns out that we're talking specifically at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, the boiling point for N2O3, N2O3 boiling point is roughly about 3.5 degrees Celsius. So that means at 3.5 degrees Celsius, the N2O3 will turn from a liquid into a gas. So that's why they said liquid N2O3 is dark blue at low temps. Low temps, lower than 3.5 degrees Celsius. But here they're giving us a 25 degrees Celsius example. So it's already a gas. So in this case, we have to include it as a gas. And then both of these will also be gases as well. So just a quick note on that. Now, since we have this, I'm just going to make sure that this is a balanced equation, but I'm looking at it and it looks balanced. They give me the Kp value, so I'm just going to stick it right over here. And let's write the Kp expression. Now remember the general Kp expression is this general formula, right? I'm just going to put it over here. It's the pressure of the products divided by the pressure of the reactants at equilibrium, and only aqueous and gases are allowed. That's why we had to get rid of that problem before, because now since we know that all three of these are gases, all of them are going to be in the Kp expression. So let's write it out over here. Kp equals the pressure of the two products. So that's pressure of, whoop, hold on, the pressure of NO. And they're all raised to the first, right? I don't see any coefficients in front of them, so you don't have to raise them to anything. Anything raised to the first is itself, times by the pressure of NO2. Okay, NO2. And then we have the pressure of N2O3. Okie dokie. And there you go. We already know that the Kp is 1.91. So we know that this number is 1.91. Now let's see. We want to know the equilibrium partial pressures. It says that if 0.238 moles of N2O3 are placed in this vessel, now they want us to find the equilibrium pressures. So they're kind of describing what's happening. Would this information be an equilibrium information or a start? Yeah, they're describing something that happened in the beginning. You see how with the wording, they're saying that we just placed this amount into a vessel and then it came to equilibrium. 
So as soon as you see that they're describing information at the start of a, of a reaction, we have to do an ice table. So I'm just going to actually move this over a little bit and we have to set up for an ice table. So I, C, E. Now some teachers or professors might do a rice table. R stands for the reaction, but less letters the better in, in my case. I just need to put this over a little bit more because I just want to show you guys, oops, what happened to the end? There we go. I just want to state that I stands for initial. Now, when we're dealing with KP, there's only one unit that can be in here, and that's the pressure unit ATM. They gave me moles. But in order for me to use the ice table, this value of the N203 has to be in ATM. It cannot be in moles. So how are we going to go from moles to ATM? Well, we're talking about pressure. So we think back to the pressure chapter of when we did all of the, the formulas for pressure, right? And there is a unit or there's a formula for a pressure with moles and a liter, right? A volume with the temperature. This is PV equals NRT. So basically I have to solve for the P. Now remember, this is very specific. If we're using this formula, the volume has to be in liters and we do have it in liters. It's 1.52. The N is the number of moles, and they gave us 0 0.236 moles, so that's good. The R value is the constant value of 0 0.0821, right? We use 0 0.0821 if we're using gases. We use the other R value if we're talking about energy. And then the T is the temperature, but it has to be in Kelvin. They gave me 25 degrees Celsius. So in order to go from 25 degrees Celsius, all we have to do is just plus 273 to get 298 Kelvin. Now I'm going to use this information to solve for the pressure. Then I could plug it in into the initial. So let me just maybe, we're going to go into the ice table a little bit here, but then I'll get rid of it. So P times 1.52 equals N.236 times the R, 0 0.0821, times 298. Now, if we just want to get P by itself, all we have to do is just divide by 152 on both sides. So I just have to divide this whole thing by 152. And that will cancel this out. And the pressure of the N203 will be whatever this is. So let's see, 0 0.236 times 0 0.0821 times 298. I'm going to divide that all by 1.52, and I get 3.9, actually, should be rounded 3.80. So let's work with that. So we have 3.80 ATM, and that now is the number that goes here. So I'm just going to put 3.80 because I know that that is the correct unit. The only unit for pressure that goes into an ice chart is ATM. Now, just pause the video because I just need to get rid of this calculation. Um, so if you need to write it down, just pause it. And then we will continue moving on. I need to find out what the initials of NO are. But when they were describing what happened at the beginning, right? they're just saying that this was placed into a 1.5 liter vessel. Did they place any NO in there? No, they didn't say. Did they place any NO2 in there? No. So we didn't start off with any of these, zero and zero. C stands for change. And this is when we either increase in pressure or we decrease. The easiest way to go about this is spot out your zero initials. Remember, you could only go up from here. You can never have negative pressure. So since we started off with nothing, we have to increase it. So we would have to plus a value on both sides. And if this is the increase side, that means that this has to decrease. So this would be minus. But now by how much? Well, we don't really know. So we use that handy dandy variable of x, right? And we just have to go by the coefficients. 
But in this case, and I don't like that there's too many yellows here. In this case, um, there was one for each one of them. So this would technically be minus one X, but it's the same thing as just saying X. And then the same thing goes for here, plus X and plus X. E stands for equilibrium. And this is just the combination of the initial and the change. So 3.80 minus X would just be 3.80 minus X. 0 plus x is just x, and 0 plus x is just x. We use this handy-dandy chart to get our thoughts together because this is the only thing that we care about. These equilibrium values are now going to be placed in the KP expression. So let's get to it. We know that the KP was 1.91. Now we know that the NO is going to be an x value, and the same thing with NO2. That's going to be an x value as well. And the N203 is going to be 3.80 minus X. So let's plug it all in. 1.91 equals, we have X times X. And this would be now divided by 3.80 minus X. Close that up. Now, some of you might already be saying, oh gosh, <laughs> oh gosh, Christina, it looks like the, the, the quadratic equation. Why can't we just get rid of this minus X? Isn't it negligible? The answer is unfortunately not. Since the KP is 1.91, we can't negate this minus X because remember a KP close to one means that I have equal amounts of uh, products and reactants at equilibrium. So this change will probably make a big difference. I can't just say that this is going to be some, some, some small number, and we're going to be basically left with 3.8. If this KP was like 1.91 times 10 to the negative 10th, then we can get rid of the X, and then it makes us doing the math much easier. But they didn't, you know, they gave us a 1.91. <laughs> so we got we to gotta keep it. So what I'm going to do is x times x is the same thing as x squared, so I'm just going to get rid of one of them, and we're just going to say that this is a squared. And now it looks like we can do a nice cross multiplication. This times this would equal this times, you know, what's left over here because this was technically over 1. So let's see. We have 1.91 times 3.80 minus x equals x squared. Let's do the distribution. So 1.91 times 3.8. I get 7.2, and maybe I'll write this over here because I need a little bit more room. So I have 7258 minus 1.91x equals x squared. In order to use the quadratic equation, we need to put everything over to the x squared side or bring the x squared over to the other side. It doesn't really matter. I know that a lot of students like to have a positive x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these two over to the other side. So by doing that, I would plus 1.91x and then plus, whoop, oh boy. <laughs> plus 1.91x, and that will cancel this out. And then I would have to minus 7.258. So minus 7.258. And that will get rid of this. And now if I just do that, this whole side would equal to zero. So I can just basically get rid of this, right? And then I'm just going to pull this up because I can't simplify this. And I'll just pull this over, and I'll say that this side equals 0. Beautiful. Now we're ready to do the quadratic equation, right? We just need to label what our a, b, and c is. Remember, the a value is what is in front of the x squared. The b value is the number in front of the x. And the c value is the left-hanging number at the end. 
So in this case, since there was no number in front of the x squared, remember that's a 1. So a equals 1. b equaled the 1.91. And now just be careful with the c value. It was a negative value. You have to take that into consideration. So c was a negative 7.258. And now we have basically two things that we can do. If you have the quadratic equation function on your calculator, all you have to do is plug in the a, b, and c value, click enter, and then you'll get two x values. You will get rid of the negative one. The positive answer is the right one. You could also go onto Google, type in, you know, uh, quadratic formula, quadratic formula calculator. There's probably tons of uh, websites that will do the calculation for you. You plug in A, B, and C, get rid of the negative answer. But for all of you that want to do the math, I'm here for it. Let's do the math. <laughs> so in that case, I'm going to pause the video, or you pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to get rid of some of this stuff. Like, this is going bye-bye. We don't need this math anymore. This I will pull. Actually, I could get rid of this. We don't need this either. And then I'm just going to pull this on to over here and start fresh. So let's just put the general quadratic formula up. X equals, we're solving for X, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, and that's all divided by 2A. So let's plug in our A, B, and C. So X equals negative B, and the B was a 1.91, so close that up, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 1.91 again, and I have to square that, minus 4 times a, which was 1, times c, which was a negative 7.258, and now I'm just going to extend this uh, square root sign, and this has to now be all divided by 2 times a, so 2 times 1. Let's clean this up. 2 times 1 is the same thing as just times it by 2, so that's pretty easy. Um, negative uh, 1.91, I could just get rid of these parentheses, so it's now just going to be a negative 1.91, and now I can get rid of this in one shot into the calculator, so I could do 1.91 squared minus 4 times 1 times the negative 7.258. So I get 32.6801. So I can basically get rid of this whole thing. Whee! Oh yeah. Quadratic equation is not that bad. It's pretty fun. I like, I like to do math. So just like a puzzle. 32.6801. I'm going to square root that guy. And I get an uh, answer with a lot of decimals. I'll try not to round as much. I'll try to pull this out as much as I can. This is 5.71665. I think that should be good enough. And then I will cut the rest of this off. Oh, and actually, I think we just did the square root, so we can get rid of this. Okay. Now, at this point, we have two options right? We can either, and maybe I'll just make this a little bit nicer. We'll squeeze this in. We have basically two answers. We have to separate this because I have one answer that's positive and one answer that's negative. So in this case, I could either do negative 1.91 plus a 5.71665, and then that's all divided by 2, or I can do a negative 1.91 minus 5.71665. 71665, and that's all divided by 2. Now, look back at your equilibrium, guys. One of or two of the equilibriums are just going to be your x value. And remember, these are equal to x. There is no such thing as negative pressure, and there's no such thing as negative concentration. Here we're dealing with pressure, but there's no such thing as a negative pressure. So if we get an x answer that's being negative, we could just get rid of it. That's not the right answer. One of these is the right one. The other one is incorrect. Now, I don't mean incorrect because the quadratic equation is taking it from math, from a graph. It has not, the calculator doesn't understand that we're trying to do chemistry here. So in chemistry land, 
we negate the negative because it doesn't make sense in our situation. So can you tell which one is going to be the negative and which one's going to be the positive answer? This one at the bottom will give me a negative value. So I don't even have to, uh, you know, worry. I don't even have to do the math here. This is not the correct one for us. It doesn't make sense. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this one. So I'm going to say negative 1.91 plus 5.71665 and then divide that by 2. And I get 1.90. That is the x value. And now we can basically get rid of everything except for that x value. So pause the video if you want to. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit better. We don't need any of this. All we just need is that x value. So bye bye. Now we have x being equal to 1.90. So from the quadratic equation, x equals 1.90. So we just want the equilibrium partial pressures of each. Well, here they all are, right? So the pressure of N2O3 was 3.80 minus the x value, which was 1.90. So 3.80 minus 1.9 is 1.9. So 1.90 ATM. And now the other ones, the pressure of NO, which was just X, and we found out that X was 1.90, this would just be 1.90 ATM. And then maybe if I could just, maybe I'll just scooch this over just so that I can get all three of them in one line. The pressure of NO2 would also equal x and x was 1.90 so that's it 1.90 atm and that's it look at that guys so a little quadratic little uh doing you know past uh, uh past uh chapters worth pv equals nrt but these are these are the end of the chapter so they should be a little bit more challenging than the beginning so hopefully this helped okay Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you're doing well out there. Stay safe and stay healthy. Okay. And I wish you all the best. Good luck in your studies. And I will see you all later. Bye-bye.